Right, g'day YouTube, it's uh, Matt here from the Wicked GQ Patrol channel. Uh, it's a bit hot and sweltering in Melbourne, we're going through this bloody heatwave at the moment, and it's driving me nuts. And right in the middle of the heatwave, guess what happens? My bloody air conditioning stops working and throws the bloody circuit breaker, or should I say the combination uh, safety switch circuit breaker. And I reset it, thinking maybe it was just from the lightning storm that we had. And nut, uh, she throws circuit breaker every hmm, hour to two hours. And so I did the current monitoring on it and found out that it seems to be running pretty good on its current. So I thought, well, that's a bit weird. So I've got a evaporative cooler. It's a Coolberries. It's switched off at the moment. Uh, it threw the breaker. Um, but I've already been up on the roof and, well, we've found a problem, but I'll, I'll show you what is involved in these bloody EVAPs. Uh, they're pretty simple. I've had to learn a little bit about them. And um, uh, anyway, uh, so before you work on one of these bloody things, uh, I recommend that you guys go to your switchboard and find out which circuit breaker or fuse runs the evaporative and switch it off down below now. This switchboard's open because I didn't know which I wanted to current monitor it below. And because it was raining, I couldn't do it from above. So I decided to put my clamp meter on. Around like that. And measure it like that. So, um, always switch it off before you work on the unit. Otherwise, you might be in trouble. So, these units are up on the roof. So, we're going to go now up on the ladder and I'll show you what we're dealing with so I already said that I pulled it apart but this is basically with the lid off that's the fan motor there it's a 600 watt model this one this is a cool breeze and it comes out of this ghastly looking hole over here so right here I've isolated power as I said this is your control box and there's a plug that goes in through the hole and plugs into the motor below that is your float valve this is your water inlet so basically 240 gets sent onto there some models actually this model is a 24 24 volts gets sent into there it pressurizes this and lowers down and blocks the drain out and this big fat module here is the water pump so inside here we have the control board it's a main control board that does the whole kit and caboodle so we'll just pull that off because I may need to take the wire out we'll see I know what the problem is and I'll show you that in a minute now I'll emphasize again make sure you turn it off and test it so test that it's dead um, this model actually if I kick the tile out has a plug under the tiles you could also unplug it and that way you know you're safe all right so in there is a capacitor this one doesn't look too old this one is a 25 microfarad and 450 volt it sounds about right for the size of motor and there's all your motor connections which are here so the problem with this is that as I was saying it was shutting down the uh, safety switch every few minutes or every half an hour and just today I, when I turned it on again to retest it because I was playing around inside here trying to find what was uh, what was going on and suddenly I smelt electrical burn and a lot of zapping so I was like okay what's going on here faulty motor I was about to go on in it I was going to pull the motor out find out what motor it is and order a new one they're about 350 bucks um, off the internet plus postage but I found this there's a ghastly plug in between which I didn't think would be there but there it is and as you can see all the goo inside there has actually burnt and melted through and the plug is actually burning so um, I reckon I could just bet, bet my socks that that's been arcing away when it gets moist and wet due to this thing is an evaporative and it puts water into the bottom it fills the bottom of water and this all gets nice and wet and the whole thing is basically 88 percent humidity all the time whilst it's running so um another thing we look at if we look in in this plug those pins are quite black so they're your brown and 
hard to tell. I might be able to tell on the other plug what it is. Just bear with me because I'm just taking it easy on the roof. But you got your white, sorry, they're white and blue. And white and blue. Let's see on the side of the motor if we can get. So white goes to your, no, it goes through your capacitor. And blue is your neutral. So that is why it was not zapping all the time. It was only on high speed and very low speed and low speed it needs a capacitor and high speed would need the capacitor quite a lot as it's a fair bit under load and start up current is high so that's when it would also trip while starting up so we're going to actually fix that up and we're going to get rid of the plug we're going to join it with some fancy wagos when i can get them out of my pocket we're going to join them up with this give it a burl and if that fixes it, I might have to invest in soldering on some wires and getting some good heat shrink, uh, sticky heat shrink, not the standard stuff. I don't know if you can get sticky heat shrink, that's short, small, but I want to properly seal it up instead of just using uh, Wayo connectors. But Wayo connectors will give it the separation that it needs instead of that dodgy plug that can come, uh, that can give you a high resistance rating. So I'm going to do that right now. We're going to plonk it in. It's quite easy to plonk in. This thing sits on this round frame here, and that just drops in and lines up on the two pins, which I'll show you now, the two pins. Lines up on these two pins there and over there, and it just sits there. Nothing else holds it in. I was expecting to see some screws or a clip or something to hold it in, but it's pretty, pretty simple. So we're going to do that. Um, now, just a mention of these... EVAPs, it's a good idea to change the filters every five years. These, these ones are probably overdue now for new filters, and that will be in my next year's budget. But um, the pumps pack up quite often. I thought it was a pump that was faulty, but um, it wasn't a pump because I'd run the fan only and it was still tripping out the breaker. So anyway, um, yeah, we'll plonk it all together and see how we go. So there we have it. I'll put it all back together. I don't know if we can zoom in on this. Have a look at that. Absolutely burnt to the smithereens. So I'd say with a 95% um, accuracy that that's what's uh, gone bang. And the fan, as you can see there, it just uh, sits in there. Nothing special about it just make sure when you put it in that the fan is free spinning and not rubbing against the sides otherwise you're going to have more problems than you can imagine make sure that all your wires are clipped up and not sitting against anything that will move otherwise you'll end up wearing your cables out and uh, the pumps in there all right all right so we can uh, put the lid on now, go downstairs, switch it on and fire it up and see what happens. But I'm pretty sure, I'm quite sure that that was it. That was the problem with it. Make sure you don't uh, try and twist the fan blades too, otherwise see how they move. Otherwise your, um, your air pressure on the motor will be too great. And if it's too great, then you'll uh, overload your motor and potentially burn it out pretty quick. But uh, yeah, I only had this literally running for two minutes and uh, it got so hot that uh, I couldn't even put my finger on the end of the shaft right here. It has cooled down now, but that would have been because it was arcing out and potentially not even connecting properly. So I hope I haven't damaged the motor as it has been a couple of days, it's been playing up me trying to fault find whether it's a pump or a motor problem and when the plug actually sits in behind this section so you can't see it so you don't know that it's actually arcing out there and not in the motor or somewhere else and when you're up here with the wind you can't smell where the burning's coming from without actually physically pulling everything off and having a good sniff so anyway we'll see how we go uh, whilst i'm up here as well you probably notice that a lot of these uh, units uh, eject their water out somewhere. They should be uh, a bit better than this. Uh, this is uh, being ejected straight on the top of the roof tile underneath the unit. If you look under there, there's I think a 50mm pipe. So really what should happen is that there should be a um, 
a 90 degree elbow and now a 45 degree elbow or a flexible join into pipe running down to the gutters not be poured straight on the concrete and have a look at the surface of the concrete there versus here this has all been eaten away by erosion from the water constantly um, drain on it or, or dripping on it and if you've got a nice painted roof that's going to come out as a as a disgusting streak of uh, a line going down to your gutters so um, when I get this roof painted you can see it's a little bit awful at the moment I will be um, putting attaching a pipe onto that um, onto this pipe and heading it down into the gutters um, now some people have asked me in the past oh why can't you just use all that water in your garden the problem is is that the water is so full of sediments um, dirt and it's been recycled hundreds of times or thousands of litres have been recycling through these filters and that water is not drinkable and not recommended to be used on plants if if you want to try it go go right ahead um, but I'd be trying it on a small catch of your garden before you go watering all your plants with it just in case it's no good so uh, anyway uh, off the roof and we'll give it a buzz so here we go we've uh, turned the power back on and so we turn on fan mode it's on 100% listen to that straight up up ramp straight away no variance in speed I was getting variances in speed uh, occasionally a very light smell of burning that I couldn't figure out where it's coming from whether it was from the AC or somewhere else and I couldn't figure it out until it started tripping breakers so that's a uh, fan and before if I turn it off I tried to run in the exhaust mode it would just trip out straight away so we're going to try that now straight up full blast it has a little timer because it lets the fan motor totally stop before turning it back onto reverse so it doesn't overheat the motor but look at that running beautifully so we'll put it on fan mode again it will come out here I've actually put my current uh, my ammeter on the circuit to watch the current so running at 2.4 right now there we go 4.4 and we're coming down 3.7 3.8 3 3.7 it's nicely running at 3.7 amps so 3.7 amps you're still looking at the voltage of this place around 850 watts it's a little high uh, to be honest so what I might do is uh, order another capacitor because if the capacitor is a little bit shonky then you're going to get issues with uh, with that as well so what we can do now I'm going to turn that back down to 50% I'm going to run it right down because before it would zap out on low speed as well so at minimum speed it should be around I believe 750 rpm on those fans mind you whilst you're up there I didn't mention it and I failed to it's good to check the fans for big cracks um, because if you throw a fan blade that wouldn't be nice either uh, it'll definitely destroy the plastics and the uh, thin steel that's up there and even the cradle itself Right, I'm going to put that on 50% and then I'm going to put it onto AC mode. So what we have to do now is go off automatic cool and set the temperature to 21 degrees and off we go. That, that now will start to fill the unit with water and we've got our air conditioning back. So yeah just a little lesson on uh, evaporatives. Uh, I'm not a big fan of them. Um, I'm actually going to upgrade uh, to uh, just split systems in the house as time goes by. It's not recommended to leave these on 24-7, seven days a week because the air gets very moist. As you can see, we are sitting at 77% now, but that's around the humidity that it will run at uh, after a good weeks of use, even 
uh, on a hot day so everything like cardboard and everything becomes moist and and wet feeling and it's just not not good for you it's not good for the house so it's a good idea to turn them off every three days let your house air out I just run it on fan mode even from outside air for a good you know three four hours let everything dry out and then switch it back on again but anyway that is matt from the wicked gq patrol channel over and out